It is the Carell Cast. I am Carell. So very glad you are joining me. What a week. What a weekend. Uh, I, my house is a mess. My studio here uh, because of the Dorian's Film Toast. Uh, it is filming actively and will air April 18th on Revry for free. R-E-V-R-Y dot TV. Go get the app so you're all ready to watch it on Sunday, April 18th and see who's going to win the Dorian uh, this year in film and television. We've got a lot of great stars Charo is with us. I just saw Charo's performance. Oh my God, you're gonna love it. I mean, really, Charo, you're gonna you're gonna love it. We got Brad Rowe. We got Harry Hamlin. We got we got everybody. We've got everybody, and we've got so many winners from films this year. People that you're gonna see at Oscar and Emmy. It's all gonna be on the Dorian's Film Toast 2021 on Reverie, April 18th. If you are a Patreon subscriber, bless you. You will be getting a link for that. All right, let's be talking a lot. We got a lot to talk about today. We're gonna talk about share and woke culture. Uh, we're going to be talking about business and our rights. Uh, we're going to be talking about rapper DMX, who you may not know, but he's in the hospital uh, on life support uh, after a, uh, a drug incident. Uh, and then we're going to talk about vaccine passports. But first, let's start talking about Warren. There's a documentary on Netflix about clothing and the history of the clothing that you have. Not just the history of clothing, but your clothing. Like, I wore this sweater when I met my husband or whatever. I'm wearing a Mickey Mouse shirt, a very large one. Uh, it's from my big blubby days. And whenever I feel overwhelmed, I put it on because it's big, it's comfy. It reminds me of my parents and Disneyland and many things. And I'm just curious, what do you wear? What do you put on uh, when you want to feel comfortable? Like when you want to feel more than just comfortable, when you want to feel loved, when you want to feel safe, what do you put on? Because clothing can do that. Uh, leave it in the comments down below underneath here on youtube.com forward slash really Carell or email contact at really Carell.com. That's contact at really Carell.com. Of course, support the show, Patreon, P A T R E O N.com forward slash K A R E L K A R E L. All right, Cher tweeted out about this. You know, the Derek Chauvin trial is going on. It's a shame that it has to. There's videotape of the guy killing, uh, you know, George Floyd. So the fact that there is even a trial. Uh, but there is. And Cher tweeted a conversation between her and her mother. She, her mother said she was watching the trial. And Cher said, you know, Mom, I feel, I feel like if only I was there, maybe I could have done something to stop it. And she got all this backlash from the black community saying, oh, just leave it to a white woman to try to step in and feel our pain or appropriate our pain or whatever. Okay. I'm going to say some unpopular things here. But all minorities need to calm the frack down, okay? Because when someone is on your side and they're saying something that is compassionate, like, I wish I could have been there so maybe I could have done something, taking them to task over it, saying that there's something other than genuine, or saying that as a white person she shouldn't, what? Should she say that she did? if she'd have been there she shouldn't have helped George Floyd? Could she have tweeted, well, mom, there's really nothing we could have done? Instead, you have a high-profile celebrity who is more beloved now than ever, you know, saying out loud, I wish I would have been there so I could have helped him. And they, the community attacks her. This is getting old. It's getting old when people are on your side and you try to vilify them because they're a different color. In fact, I have found that some of the most racist people tend to be those people who are accusing other people of racism. Because if you were a black person and you took offense in that comment from Cher, then you're a racist. Because guess what? White people can say that they want to help you. White people can say that they would have stepped in to stop a murder. It doesn't take away from your black experience. It doesn't take away from your black pain. Because pain has no color. Empathy has no color. Caring has no color. Now, there's a, there's a sticker. Caring has no color. They're all colorblind. They're all the colors of the rainbow. Cher has a caring heart. She went and rescued a damn elephant. There's a, there's a whole movie about it. And yes, had she been there, maybe he wouldn't be dead because she's Cher. And had Cher made a ruckus on the side of the road about them killing a black guy, guess what? They might have stopped. Or someone might have stepped in. But no, no. Cher saying that, you know, mom, maybe if I'd have been there, maybe I could have done something. That's too much. 
People need to check themselves. That includes gays and everyone. We all need to make sure that in our zest for equality and our zeal uh, to be treated fairly, that we don't treat others unfairly. Because treating Cher that way on Twitter was unfair. It's unfair to treat an ally unfairly. And you stand the risk of alienating them. Look, I wish that straight people had said, I wish I could have been there. Maybe I could have stopped Matthew Shepard's death. I wouldn't have taken that in any other way except thank you. All anyone should have said to share after she said, I wish I was there. I wish maybe I could have stopped it. That's just someone that feels helpless trying to say, God, I, I don't know what to do. I wish I was there. I wish I could have stopped it. You know, this woke culture is going a bit far in some directions. It really is. Leave Cher alone. In fact, leave every ally alone. If a white person dresses in African garb, don't say they're appropriating your culture. Celebrate that they're celebrating your culture. If a white person says, I wish I would have been there when this black person was being shot, maybe I could have helped. Don't act like we need whitey to save the day because you need everyone to save the day. White, black, yellow, brown, green. So let's remember who our friends are and who our allies are and let's not condemn them. And this has happened a lot on Twitter. People have been condemned when they've actually been trying to help. So that's not a good thing. Not a good thing at all. And, you know, that brings me to the next topic, actually, because, you know, it all goes into this cultural wokeness, this, this cultural awakening uh, that's out there. And, and that's what Cher was experiencing the backlash for. Cher was simply trying to be, you know, woke and awake and, and all of that. So let's let her be her, okay? All right. A lot of businesses are... Um, talking about Georgia, pulling out of Georgia. Oh, we need, you know, we, we need to uh, not do business in Georgia, you know, that sort of thing. And politicians are speaking out against them, okay? And uh, Mitch McConnell said it's like a parallel woke government today. That's, that's what he compared it to. And, you know, Coca-Cola and Delta Airlines, they've all gotten into mashups with the leaders in Georgia about these ridiculous voting laws that they are, you know, passing or, you know, that have passed uh, that are to restrict voting, where it's easier to buy a gun than it is to go vote. And businesses have done this a lot of the last, like, year. Apple has threatened to pull out of this state. or And it works. It does work. It gets the state to pay attention. But to me, that's, that's worse than even, like, what people think Cher did. Because it is not up to corporate America to save us or our rights. And the fact that corporate America is the only one being listened to about this means that corporate America has way too much power. They have more power than the people. Think about that. If we are upset about voting rights in Georgia, if we are upset about something going on in our state, it feels like there's not much we can do about it until Apple jumps on board or until Delta Airlines jumps on board or until, you know, like Fox News. It, it feels like we're powerless to stop them unless the advertisers pull out. And yes, that is an effective tool, but it's become a tool that we rely on too much. We don't rely on ourselves to do anything. We rely on the business. And I, you know, I, for one, I don't like that. I don't like that, you know, corporate rights. You know, the United, the United States of Corporation, like, you know, I want equal rights. I want free rights. Well, let me check with Apple on that. Do you have Apple Care? Yes, I do. Well, then you get civil rights. <laughs> what about when my Apple Care expires? Oh, well, then you might be discriminated against again. Best to re-up that Apple Care plan. I mean, really, is Apple going to offer Apple Care for civil rights? Because it appears that corporations like Coca-Cola, uh, the, you know, going back to the original Coke ads, like, to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony. Well, we haven't yet. So, you know, so is that how it's going to be? Like, you can't discriminate against me. Coca-Cola said no. Really, that. <laughs> so now instead of going to court, we're going to go to corporations. Instead of going to the polls, we're going to go to Walmart. And the more we buy of a particular brand, 
Like all of a sudden, the gay, and this has happened in gay rights. I've seen it happen in gay rights. But then again, I've seen the converse. For instance, alcohol companies have made fortunes off of gay men and women. They, and they, you know, they at pride events and everything. And yet they don't give back. They give some, they give a little bit, but they don't give nearly what they give to other causes or politicians. I don't want to name names, but um, an advertiser for the Dorians uh, sent swag for me to send off to the stars. They sent like gay pride parade stuff that you'd throw from a truck. You know, just cheap nothing, plastic beads. And, and I'm like, would they send this to Neris? Would they send this to the Academy to give out in the gift bags? Oh, no, but it's the gays. Give them rainbow flags and uh, rainbow fans, plastic fans, and a, a few necklaces, a, a few kerchiefs that are rainbows with a logo on it. That's how little they thought of our award show. And, and I, you know, I, again, I'm not going to name names, but when I say how little, I don't mean the corporation. I mean the rep at that corporation thought, oh, well, I'm just sending stuff to a gay group to send out to their members. So let me send some plastic Mardi Gras beads and some fans. Uh, no. I'm not going to send Dolly Parton that. I'm not going to send any of our winners that kind of stuff. I have more respect for those people. But corporations often take, 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 and then they give you a little tiny bit back, and we're happy about it. Oh, well, AT&T gave a grant for $5,000. So what? They're multi-billion dollar companies. We can't be relying upon corporate America for our rights, honey, because what happens when we change providers? Are you with T-Mobile? Well, yes, I am. Oh, well, then you get to be equal. Well, I'm with AT&T. Oh, no, you can't come in. I mean, is that what it's going to be like? Because if that were the case, then cor and, and corporations aren't doing it. If corporations were serious about Georgia, and by the way, Tyler Perry, why are you still filming there, Tyler Perry? Yes, I know you built a multi-million dollar film complex there, but honey, it's time to pack that up and go. It, it is time. If businesses left the red state, because of their asinine added left, as in pulled their corporate offices and their products, stopped distributing. You know, in the Civil War, they burned crops as they came south from the north. That's why they eat black-eyed peas in the south. That's the only crop they didn't burn. You know, that's how it needs to be. If Coca-Cola is really upset about what's happening in Georgia, pull out and stop sending to the Georgia grocery stores. Let these people go without your product. Ah, but they won't. They'll still sell products to bigots. Like all those companies that came out after the insurrection and said, we're not going to give to anybody that participated, any politician that voted against the certification. Well, that lasted 20 minutes. Because corporations have only one thing in mind, and that's their corporate profits, honey. That's, that's all they've got in mind. That's all they want. That's all they care about. They're only being woke right now because consumers want them to be. Bigots, let, let's take the gay issue. For years and years and years and years and years and years, corporations have sold to bigots, homophobes. They've endorsed bigots and homophobes. They've been part of events where bigots and homophobes thrive. Now there's a few that say, oh, no, we're not going to do that. They're not trans inclusive or they're not this or that, but not many. And is that where we are, really? We are so powerless now, we got to ask corporations for our rights. Because, honey, have you ever tried to deal with a corporation? The last thing they care about is your rights. Okay, that's, that's the last... All they care about is their bottom. I mean, bottom line. Sorry. That's all they care about. If the bottom line dictates they stand up for civil rights, they will. As soon as that's over, they will drop you faster than... <laughs> I, don't even, I can't even think of someone that drops someone that fast. I really can't. All right, you are listening to the Corel Cast. I am Corel. Don't forget to go to my website, reallycorel.com. Watch all the videos there for free, okay? There's so many videos on my YouTube. It's why I sent reallycorel.com to the YouTube channel uh, because there's so many videos there for you to see, and I, I really want you to, you know, see them. <laughs> I mean, really, I, I really want you to see them. So please uh, go there. All right, uh, now what do we got on the, on the agenda? We got, oh, yes, vaccine passports. Everyone's acting like a vaccine passport uh, is, you know, just not the thing. Like, oh, well, let me rephrase. Republicans uh, have said, oh, you know, we can't 
do a vaccine passport. It's discriminatory. I'm like, what are you talking about? Discriminatory. You know, if, if, if what? If, I, I, I don't get it. How could, how could these people, uh, you know, really, how could these people say it's discriminatory to have a vaccine passport? It's not discriminatory. And now they're acting like, I mean, have these people never traveled? Because I'm, I'm telling you right now, my dog, Ember, okay, when I take her on a plane or I take her on a anywhere, she has to be vaccinated. Vaccinated right now, legally. She has to be. And so because of that, I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, if you want to go to an, uh, like an African nation, if you want to go anywhere, you got to have the vaccines, honey. You can't just be going places and not have the vaccines. You got to go places and have the vaccines. Other countries be like, if you visit in here, honey, you got to get the poke. You got to get the jab. Sometimes I go to other countries to get poked. Uh, I'd love to go to Ireland. Oh, Irish men. Oh, don't get me on a tangent. I just love Irish men. Oh, my God, with their beards and their accents. And oh, I just love them. Uh, anyway. So if you want to leave the country, you got to get poked. That, that my dog does. I have to show my dog's vaccination papers to get her in a lot of places. You can't bring her into one of these indoor dog gyms without her vaccination papers. You know, I, I can't bring her on a JetBlue or any flight unless she has updated vaccination papers. You can't get much from a dog, but you can get a whole hell of a lot from a person. So why would a dog have to have vaccination? We should not. If a dog has to have it, we should have it. Okay. Let's just go. Let's just start right there. If your doggy has to have the papers, then you have to have the papers because you are more filthy than your dog. Okay? Can I get an amen for being filthier than your dog? Can I get an amen? Amen for being filthier than your dog. If it wasn't the doggy that gave you the COVID, honey. It ain't the doggy that gives you the flu or the rubella. It ain't a doggy that gives you the measles, it ain't the smallpox, the malaria, Ebola, none of that. Ain't a dog giving you that? You can kiss your doggy all day long. You ain't getting any of that. But people, lordy, people will give you all the worst kinds of diseases. Syphilis, gonorrhea, rubella, smallpox, measles, COVID, the flu, the cold. People be filthy little agents of infection, honey. So yes, have a vaccine and not just one vaccine. I want to make sure you are fully vaccinated before you get on a plane and you are two inches either from me on this side or two inches for this way. For, well, not me. Can I just tell you, I won't fly again if I can't fly business or first. I will never fly again in coach. I'm of the age where I'm 58 and I'm telling you right now, I will not ever fly in coach ever again. I can't do it. Coach is for young people. We old people, we need some space, honey. We need some privacy. We need some space. We need a little room. You need to get out my face, okay? In business class, they at least a little bit over, okay? In coach, they, you know, they're your gynecologist. They're just, they're right up in you. I mean, they, they could do a doctor. They could check your ears, check your eyes, check it, because they are that close. And they breathe in heavy sometimes. Oh, my God. I, one time I was on this airline, I had this person so fat, they were oozing over. And I was huge. So our fat was meeting on the bar there. You know, they were oozing. I was oozing. It was oozing everywhere. Oh, my God. She asked me if I wanted my dessert. I am not making that up. And I looked at her and said, do I look like I miss dessert? This was when I weighed 310 pounds. I love flying now as a vegan because you got to put in a special, well, when, when there's meals, you got to put in a special meal request. You get a special meal. Mm -hmm. Acting like a vaccine passport is some sort of infringement. You know, it's an infringement on civil rights. Giving me your germs. That is an infringement on my civil rights. I didn't ask for your germs. I didn't say, please infect me with your agents of infection. Please give me your germs. I'm not wearing a shirt that says, let me be your breeding ground. Uh-uh, no. No. I don't need your germs. Your germs are ugly. I don't want them. I don't need them. I got to have them. So keep your germs away. And yes, I want to see, see some papers, please. I want to see that you are vaccinated against anything that you could give me. Because if you ain't, you should not be close enough so I can read the date off a quarter in your pocket. Okay, really? And these people, they have no idea about personal space on airplanes. They're all up in your personal space. They lean that seat back until their head is right here. You are looking at their dandruff. I say that not only that we have a vaccine passport, we have to have a cleanliness passport. 
You've had to at least had a shower in the last 12 hours. There should be a shower passport. People have gotten on a plane pretty damn rank. They've been in the airport 14, 16, 18 hours. They're getting on there smelling like yesterday's onions. I'm like, what the hell is wrong with this person? Go to the bathroom, shower, something, Lord. Yes, you should have to prove that you aren't infecting the world with your contagion. Vaccine passports are an infringement on civil rights. Well, then my dog shouldn't have to have any shots. You want to license your dog, which they make you do, except here in Clark County. But if you want to license your dog, you got to show they've been vaccinated. We, we got to bring, if you want to bring your kid to school, you should have to prove they've been vaccinated. And if you want to hop on an airplane, which is a small tube flying through the air with recirculated air, you should have to prove you ain't going to infect the rest of the plane with your stank. Okay? Good Lord. Oh, a vaccine passport is an infringement on my civil rights. But telling a woman she can't have an abortion is not. It's the same people. The same people that say they shouldn't have a vaccine passport are all up in people's uteruses, honey. They have no problem with sticking their hand up inside a woman's vagina and saying, oh, you shall not have an abortion. But tell them they got to prove that they've been vaccinated and suddenly that's a bridge too far. Lord, have mercy on my soul. I cannot even take it. Of course we need vaccine passports in the modern age. Of course we do. Okay, of course. There's, there's just no two ways. There's no doubts about that. There's no two ways about that. All right, so we've talked about share and woke culture and that if someone is actually trying to be your friend, if someone is actually trying to say to you, hey, I'm on your side. I wish I had been there so I could have maybe stopped it. Don't attack them because of their skin color because then you're just being a racist. Okay, so we've, we've done that. We have done, it's not up to business to protect our civil rights. It's nice that they want to be on the right side of things, but business should already, you know, not deal with state. Why are businesses dealing with the devil in the first place? Why are businesses dealing in states and starting their corporations in states and building their plants in states that are bigoted and backwards in the first place? All right, the last two last things I want to talk to you about. Uh, the first is, you know, I have always said we need a five or ten thousand dollar vehicle in this country. You know that it just kills me when I go over here to the food bank when I'm walking and I see them lined up at the food bank across the street at the school, and they're in like thirty thousand dollar cars, forty thousand dollar cars. That just you know kills me. And the other day I said, you know, screw student loans being forgiven. You ain't got to go to college, okay? Your ass ain't got to go to college. You can go to try. I did not go to college. I went for two years, and then I went off to be me. And guess what? I did okay. You ain't got to go to college. 90% of college degrees are a waste of freaking time. Oh, yes, I'm an English major with a history. You know, I, Come on. I'm studying American literature. Why? Well, I'm an art history major. Why? You gonna work in a museum? Well, no, but, but what? Oh, I'm studying the humanities. What? Half the college's degree they offer, you could, you'd get more use of whopping your butt with them than you are going to get out of the actual degree. And they go into debt seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 to get this degree. And why and for what? So you ain't got to go to college. So for, college should be free as paid for by who? Corporate America. Who benefits the most from an educated populace? Corporate America and the government. College should be a matter of national security. Everybody should get four years of it for free if they want it, if they want to go. College or trade school. That only makes us stronger as a nation. You know, I wasn't going to do the infrastructure thing today, but the notion that they would tell us not to spend $2 trillion on infrastructure, the actual building of our country, the actual roads and bridges and infrastructure. But oh no, $2 trillion is too much to spend. How much you've been spending on corporations and tax breaks and all that? How much you've been spending on the military? But you're going to tell us that $2 trillion for bridges and railroads and roads is too much money. What the hell is wrong with these people? How much crack do they consume in Washington, D.C.? You know, real water out here in Las Vegas is killing people and dogs and stuff. Don't drink it. It's called real water. Don't drink it. It's from Vegas, and it's killing people and dogs and everything. It's terrible. Uh, they sell it at the vending machines, and you can bring your container. Don't drink it. Don't drink the real water. Don't order it online, whatever. They're killing people. But I think in D.C. they literally put something in the water to make these people that stupid. Because that is just stupid. Okay? Let's not spend. Let, let's get that down to $700 million. Why? What bridge aren't you? I mean, there are, our roads are. Our road, blah, 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 ride down a road in America. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, we are a third world nation. 19th in the world in infrastructure. 19th 
India has trains that are better than ours. Amtrak don't even go to Las Vegas. You have to drive from L.A. to Vegas, and right down the middle of the 15 freeway is a perfect place. Why? Because Union Pacific has the right of way. Because 80% of all goods in the world go through Barstow, California, right down into the port of Los Angeles. 80% of everything in the U.S. goes through the trains of Barstow down into L.A. So they got to have all the tracks. No! Spend less on infrastructure. Dear God and sweet Jesus on the little cross. Of Mary. Where are we out here? Oh, we're almost done. We're almost done. Well, we'll the last thing I did want to talk to you about is a rapper, DMX, is um, uh, on life support after a drug overdose stopped his heart. And I am a compassionate human being. I really am. But his family wants to hold a prayer vigil and wants everyone to offer their prayers. Too late. The man had a drug problem. You should have been praying for him then. Okay? Because when someone is so, you know, we, we must have compassion for stupid people. We must. It's hard, but we must. DMX was an idiot to flirt with drugs and then... Like Prince, five years ago he died now from fentanyl, preventable. He didn't have to slap that patch on his ass, but he did. He, he, he. I can't even make a Prince sound. <laughs> who? I mean, who can make a Prince sound other than a prepubescent high school girl? I mean, really, no one can sound like Prince if they're over the age of 16 and been through puberty. Uh, but whatever, he, you know, he did his ow and slid on his little fentanyl patch and died in an elevator. Do I feel sorry for Prince? I do not. I have compassion, but I don't feel sorry. There's a difference. I don't feel sorry for DMX. You did a drug overdose, now your heart stopped. Oh, well, stupid tax. But I do have compassion for him. I wish, and at the risk of sounding like Cher, I wish someone had been in his life or Michael Jackson's life or Philip Seymour Hoffman's life or Corey Monteith's life. I wish someone had been in their life that made them want to quit those substances. I thank the universe every day, and I do actually, and I thank it for quitting opiates, for looking at myself in an interview on Life and Segments. You can go see the interview that did it all at my website, reallycorel.com. Go watch Life and Segments with Randy Harrison. When I saw that interview with Randy Harrison and I saw me in it, I knew I was dying. And I thought, I'm dying. I have to do something. So I wish that someone would have been in DMX's life that could have stopped him. I wish that someone would have been in Prince's and Michael Jackson's and all of them that I wish someone had cared enough. And I'm sure there were people that tried to stop them. I wish they would have listened. You know, I wish they would have listened and cared enough to listen. Drug, drug addiction is a terrible demon to get away from, but you can. People act like you are powerless as an addict. You are not. You're the only one in control. No, the drug is in control. No, it ain't. You are. You can ultimately stop the drug. The drug will not jump into your body. You don't walk by a pill of Oxy and have them dance out, dance across the counter, and then hop into your mouth. It'd be cute, but that's not what happens. All right? So I really do wish that someone had cared enough about him before he OD'd. Caring all about someone after they've OD'd, that's a little late, honey. So does he have my thoughts and prayers? No, his family does. But he's paying the stupid tax. I just wish that beforehand I could have spoken to him or someone that he cares about could have stepped in or that he would have listened. I'm sure people tried. But here's what happens if you don't listen to the people that love you. If you don't listen to yourself, you know what you're doing is wrong. Every time you do something wrong, you know it's wrong. There's not many people who do something wrong and say, I didn't know it was wrong. You do it and you know it's wrong when you're doing it. Okay, you just, you do. He knew what he was doing was wrong. Prince knew what he was doing was wrong. Michael Jackson knew what he was doing was wrong. And when you do stuff that you know is wrong and that everyone else is telling you is wrong and it ends in tragedy, I only got so many tears for you, you know? And then it becomes a head shake like that's just sad. All right, I am Carell. You be who you want to be, so I don't hurt anybody. We're going to be here Monday, Wednesday, and Friday each and every week because that's what my Patreon subscribers want, and that's what they're going to get. Thank you so much for your Patreon subscriptions. I love each and every one of you. We're going to start doing once a month vegan cooking classes through my, for my Patreon subscribers. So if you want to come into my kitchen with me on a live Zoom and learn how to be vegan and how to cook vegan, then subscribe on Patreon and you will get the link. We're going to start that in May. I have no time in April, but we're going to start that in May. All right? 
So go to my website, reallycorel.com. It goes right to YouTube. Watch all the content there. There's hours. You could you literally you, two days worth of three days worth of content. If you want to contact me, it's contact at reallycorel.com. And down below, I'd like you to leave what we talked about earlier in the show. What do you wear, like my oversized Mickey shirt here, what do you wear that makes you feel loved and make you feel good? See, I would never OD if I was wearing this shirt because I know my mama wouldn't like it. My mama would not like it. That's why I never did kill myself. After Andrew died, after mom died, when Ember dies, uh, I'm not going to kill myself because that would piss off my mama. She gave me life and fought for my life. I can't be taking it. Uh Uh-uh. I'll just have to go the way that nature intends me. All right, we'll see you all on Wednesday. I am going to be producing The Dorians between then, and don't forget you're going to watch it at April 18th, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Mwah.